Hello, welcome to the Peace Security Channel. Today we'll be talking about the Dunning-Kruger effect and how it may affect cybersecurity, your assessment of risk, both in home and enterprise, so you should stay tuned for this one. So for those of you that are not aware, the Dunning-Kruger effect is basically a cognitive bias that was mainly observed in 2000, for which both Kruger and Dunning received the Nobel Prize. It is a pretty well-observed phenomenon, though, and like, you know, even Socrates, I think, talked about it. What it basically entails is that as you get more and more experience in a particular field, your confidence doesn't actually go up, it actually goes down. As you can see from the graph, when somebody gains a little bit of experience, they gain a lot of confidence because now they think that they know everything there is to know about that field and they didn't know anything before, so they have a really high level of confidence. But then as they learn more and more, they realize that, ah, oh, so I didn't really know that much after all and I still have a lot to learn. And they discover more and more facets of knowledge that are still unknown to them. That is how they begin to lose confidence. And it slowly does start to go up again after a point when a person has attained a certain level of experience or expertise in that skill set. But at the beginning stages, what you see is that people who know less about a field are usually more confident about their statements. So when people bring into question things like brain.exe and their ability to determine whether or not they are susceptible to malware or whether or not they're smart enough to deal with malware themselves, this is something that you should keep in mind. Just because you're at the beginning of the experience scale, you might feel very confident. And you might think that, hey, I know everything there is to know about malware. I'm not going to get infected, right? But as you learn more, you might find that things are not as simple as they sometimes seem. And the same thing happens when it comes to business risk assessment. So if you cannot imagine the potential consequences of a hack when something goes wrong, you really won't do much to prevent it. And at the same time, you'll feel a lot more secure. However, if you're smart and you know the vulnerabilities that exist within your system, you will feel a lot less secure, although you will be more secure. So it's kind of like a counterintuitive correlation. The more secure people feel, generally the less secure they are and vice versa. And I can totally relate to it personally because when I was a kid, I didn't know much about malware. I didn't know anything. And when I would get infected, I'd just call technicians to fix it who were probably worse than I was and they would just reinstall the operating system and reinfect it all over again. Oh, those days of Windows XP and Salady. No, don't want to go back to that. But anyway, the point is, when I was young and I didn't know much about malware, the first time I actually removed a virus using an antivirus. I actually felt really powerful and I felt like, oh, like as long as I have an antivirus product that is up to date, I can beat any kind of malware. And like those of you who know ransomware and what it can do, you know that that's not a very smart notion. As I started to learn a little bit more, I gained a lot of confidence in that early stage. When I didn't know anything about malware analysis, I didn't know how to actually look at samples in a virtual machine and figure out what they do for yourself. But I was quite confident. And there was a stage, I think, for about a year or so, or maybe two years, where I didn't feel like needed an AV program. And I didn't run an AV program for those two years. Until one time where I actually infected myself with ransomware just because of human error and that is something I had totally forgotten to take into the equation when making that decision. And at this stage, the more I learn about malware analysis and how malware works, there is this huge um, iceberg that's underneath. And it's really difficult, honestly, to determine whether or not you are going to be able to deal with malware on your own. It's just an impossible decision to make. At least for me personally, I could think of a thousand ways in which malware could infect my system potentially. But before I couldn't see that, and as a result, I felt more secure. So the more you learn about hacking and cybersecurity attack vectors, it's actually funny the more insecure you feel. So next time you have somebody tell you that, hey, you know, you, you may not need security because, well, you know how to reinstall Windows and load up Hitman Pro, so you're good. Maybe that's just the Dunning-Kruger effect. So I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was something that was suggested to me a long time back by one of my friends who's also a malware analyst, Karsten. Like and share if you enjoy this kind of content. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.